David Williams here from Okanagan College, and this video is about modeling diodes. And when I say modeling diodes, I mean how do we mathematically model the way that a diode behaves in a circuit, or the way that a diode causes voltage and current to behave in a circuit. But before we look at that, let's just look at the, the circuit symbols that we're going to use for diodes. Um, starting with, now this is not a, the circuit symbol that's going to be used for a diode, but it's a good representation of what a diode looks like. It's a p-n junction. Up here we have the p-type material where we have this intrinsic semiconductor that was doped with, with something that had fewer electrons in the valence shell than silicon has, assuming we're talking about a silicon diode. And down here we've got material, the intrinsic semiconductor was doped with something that has one extra electron compared to the intrinsic semiconductor. Now this is a cartoon representation of the construction of a, of a diode. Now if you were to look at an actual diode, it would look something a little bit like this. It would have two leads coming out of it. It would have a cylindrical body. At one end of the body, there would be some kind of line. There may be some writing on it as well. And this orientation of this, of this drawing representing a, an actual diode corresponds to the, the P side of the diode and the N side of the diode. And finally, the circuit symbol for a diode looks like this. And again, this side of the, of the circuit symbol represents, or is the same side as this side of the actual diode, and this, this side of the cartoon PN, cartoon representation of a PN junction. And similarly, this side corresponds to this side, corresponds to this side. And the two sides of these diodes have a name. This side of the diode is called the anode on the P side material, and this side of the diode is called the cathode. And the shape of the circuit symbol sort of represents the, the behavior that the, the diode causes to, for between the voltage and current in, in the circuit, in that this is sort of like an arrow pointing in this direction to indicate that current is only allowed to flow in this direction. And when I say current, I mean the conventional current. And current so the conventional current is only allowed to flow in this direction in the diode. It's not allowed to flow in the other direction. So uh, in a circuit, a simple circuit with a diode and a resistor might look something like this. And conventional current can go in this direction in the diode. If I had the diode turned around the other way, current wouldn't be allowed to flow. Or I should say current wouldn't be able to flow. And again, when I say modeling a diode, I mean describing the relationship between voltage and current in a diode. And diodes are a nonlinear device. I mean, meaning that the relationship between voltage and current is not linear in a diode. And before we go into to what that nonlinear relationship is, let's just look first at what a linear re relationship is. So the device that you should know about that represents or that exhibits a linear, linear relationship between voltage and current is a simple resistor. So here's a simple circuit with a battery over here and a resistor. Now let's say that this is a variable resistor and also let's put some things in the circuit here to measure to measure the voltage and current in the circuit. So if I, if I put an ammeter in, in series with the circuit there and then over here I connect the voltmeter. So I can measure with the voltmeter and the ammeter here I can measure the relationship. I can measure the voltage across the resistance resistor and I can measure the current that's through the resistor. And if I adjust this volt this this voltage source from zero up to some positive value uh, all on, on various steps along the way I measure voltage and current and then I do the same for going in a negative direction and again measuring the, the the voltage and current at each at various steps. What I will end up with if I was to plot this out Now I have the current heat in the vertical axis and the voltage in the horizontal axis. And I'd plot out, I'd measure various points, voltage and current at various points. 
and I would come up with something looking like this. And and this is just sort of an abstract drawing and don't really care about what the actual voltages and currents are. But you'll notice that if I was to connect all these points, I'm going to have a nice linear relationship. And that re linear relationship we can see graphically, but we can also look at it in a mathematic ex mathematical expression. Mathematically, we can express this as the voltage is equal to the resistance times current. And we should know this as Ohm's law, where this is the multiplier. If we know what the current is, we use this multiplier, the resistance, to, to determine the voltage. Or another way to do it that would be more appropriate, I guess, to the, to the slope of the line here, if we know the voltage, we can figure out the current, and that relationship is going to be this multiplier, 1 over the resistance, times the voltage is going to give me the current. It gives me a nice linear relationship. But as I mentioned earlier, the relationship between voltage and current in a diode is not linear. And it's actually a little bit complicated. It's not too complicated. But we're going to look at a few different models that allow us to, to model that relationship between voltage and current, starting from the very easy and getting progressively, progressively more difficult. Now, if you remember back to the beginning of this video, I said that current can only go through a diode in one direction. Well, we can use that idea to have the simplest representation of a diode possible. So here is a simple circuit with the diode. And if this voltage, if this source voltage is greater than zero, then we can model that diode as simply being a short, allowing current to go through it and no other effect in, on the circuit. So if the voltage source is greater than zero and we will have some diode current going through it based on whatever res resistance value we have and whatever voltage source we have here. So the drop across that particular diode is going to be zero volts. Very simple model. Uh, for the source voltage greater than zero. Now, if the source voltage is less than zero, less than zero volts, well, we're not able, this, this is the, the reverse bias configuration for the diode. No current's going to go through it. So we'll have an ID of zero amps and the uh, voltage across the diode is simply going to be whatever the source voltage is. Now this is a very simple model. Um, the next model is only a little bit more complicated and it actually does a much better job of representing the, the diode itself. The second model takes into account the barrier voltage that's introduced by the electrons in the n-type material falling into the holes on the p-type material in the p-n junction. So hopefully you recall this model where if this is my if this is my p-n junction with some holes on this side which I'm just representing with these circles and some electrons on this side representing by these negative signs. So this is my p-n junction and it's the instant that it's created, what's going to happen, of course, is the electrons on this side are going to fall into the holes on this side. Um, not all of them, but some of these electrons are just from, from random movements are going to find these holes, and they're going to fill in the holes, and what's going to happen is we're going to have this region in between the P side and the N side where there are no free holes and there are no free electrons. Now, because we had some negative electrons moving over to this side, we are going to have one side of this barrier, or one side of this depletion region here, be more negative than the other side. So we're going to have a slight potential difference between, between the two sides of this, of this depletion region. And in order to overcome that, we need to apply a voltage that's a bit higher than zero volts. So we need to make this side somewhat positive and this side somewhat negative. And what that's going to do is going to push these, these electrons toward the holes and these holes towards the electrons, and then we're going to actually be able to have current flow. So the second model is going to take into account this barrier voltage. 
barrier voltage or often also called the forward voltage. So I'm going to designate that as the VFWD. So two situations. One is if we have this positive voltage, how do we model this this diode? So the, the diode model is going to be over here where we're going to model it with a small voltage source and then a closed switch. So um, small voltage source is the VFWD. So the actual voltage across this resistor now will be whatever your source voltage is minus this forward voltage to determine how much current is flowing in the circuit. If my voltage source is in the other orientation, then it's just going to be an open circuit like previously. No current will be, there will be no current in this circuit. <clears throat> the third model of the diode going to take into account that forward voltage. So let's say we've got some forward voltage applied here. There's some voltage applied here that's overcoming the forward voltage. So we have this full P side here and this full N side here. And we are going to have current, conventional current going in this direction. But this block here, this, this PN junction has some resistance associated with it. It's not it's not a short circuit exactly. We can we can model the fact that it's not a short short circuit by, by saying that it has some amount of resistance in it. So this this model number three, if we have positive voltage applied to our circuit with the resistor and over here is our diode. It's got to have enough voltage to overcome the forward voltage. But there will also be some resistance in that diode. Some resistance of the diode. So here's the, here's the third model. That's a, a little bit of forward voltage plus a resistance. And, and so to, keep, to determine how much current there is in this particular circuit, we're going to take the voltage, the source voltage, subtract the forward voltage, and whatever the remainder, remaining voltage is that's left over is applied across this resistor in the series with this resistor. And if I if I flip the voltage source around, well now I've got a reverse bias diode, so again, no current flowing in this, no current in this particular circuit. Model number four is going to be the most precise model that we have of a, of a diode. And I've got this set up here to show you how we could come up with this particular model. And that's using these a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the resistor, across, sorry, across this diode, and an ammeter to measure the current that's going in, going through the diode. And I should draw this as a variable voltage source. So what I would do is I would start this voltage source at zero and then in small steps, I would increase it up to some value, and as I as I increase, as I take each step, I would measure the voltage across the diode, and I'd measure the current through the diode, and then I'd do the same thing in the negative direction and see what my voltage and current is through the diode as I decrease, as I decrease the voltage from zero down to down to some value. And the result of doing all these measurements would be a graph that looks something like this. I, and you can see here that I've got actually three different regions for this diode. I've got a forward bias region. I've got a reverse bias region and I've got a breakdown region. Let's look at the forward bias region to start off with. Let's see if I, going through these, this measurement technique, this measurement, uh, measurement uh, procedure that I was just talking about. So I start my voltage at zero, my source voltage at zero, and I increase it and I measure the voltage across the diode and the current through the diode. And as I increase the voltage, you can see the current staying pretty much at zero. And as I get closer to this VD, which is the, the forward voltage that I talked about before, the barrier voltage, you see the current starts increasing a little bit. And once I've gotten up to that forward voltage point, the barrier voltage, you can see the current just takes off. So small increases in voltage result in very large increases of current. And going in the reverse direction, you can see I've got pretty much zero current up to a point where breakdown occurs. And that's this breakdown is occurring because now a lot of current's just small changes in voltages are just going to allow current to flow through this diode. Uh, we can actually model this equation even further, not just graphically, but we can also model it uh, mathematically. So that the current through the diode is an exponential, there's an exponential relationship between the current and the voltage. Well, let me just start off with, we can see that that current is somehow proportional to e to the voltage across the diode. And 
with some careful measurements and some careful careful analysis, we could determine that this relationship is equal to some constant current value. Times E to the voltage across the diode divided by another constant times a value that's dependent on temperature here. Minus one. Just a little bit more detail. So just a little bit more detail about this equation. This IS, it's called the saturation current and it's based on the diffusion of the minority carriers into the depletion region. Uh, VD, that's the voltage across the diode. E, that's the Euler's number. N is a number between one and two that depends on the diode. And VT is a voltage, it's a thermal voltage that's dependent on temperature. And specifically VT is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the temperature in Kelvin divided by the charge on an electron. Now, how this is derived is not so important for, the, for this video, but I just want you to, to recognize that this equation shows an exponential relationship between ID and VD. As, VD, as we have small changes in VD, we're going to have large changes in ID, um, specifically when we're around the forward voltage point and specifically when we're around the breakdown voltage point. So just to reiterate what we looked at in this video, we've got four different models for, for describing how voltage and current across and through a diode. Uh, shoot. So just to sum up what we looked at in this video, we looked at four different models of the relationship between voltage and current in a diode in a circuit, and starting from the very simple to the more comp and going up to the more complicated. And we looked at the, the model two, the second model, which is just showing that we can model at that we can model the diode as having just a constant voltage drop across it if it's forward biased and no current through it if it's reverse biased. And that's the model that we're going to be using most of the time because it's it's quite simple to use, and at the same time, it's pretty pretty precise in describing the behavior of a model, the behavior of a diode. So I hope you learned a little bit in this video, and I will see you in the next one.